Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in our webinar on leveraging the Oracle Lifecycle Management in your Hyperion environment. Uh, my name is Brian Decker. I'm the account executive here at Key Performance Ideas. Uh, this, as you should know, this is not a sales presentation. It's more of a technical presentation. Um, and I wanted to give, but I wanted to give you a little background on KPI before I turn it over to David Quinn and he jumps into the, the LCM presentation. So uh, we're a consulting firm that specializes in the Oracle EPM suite of products. Uh, as you know them, that is basically Hyperion. Uh, Hyperion is, is all that we do, uh, and, and we are experts in it. It's all that we've ever done. Uh, we're a certified partner with Oracle in a couple of different areas. We're a certified gold partner. Uh, which means that uh, you'll see us listed on the Preferred Hyperion Implementation Partner on the Oracle website. Uh, it also means that we can sell the Hyperion product, so uh, we can help you there, too. Uh, we're, we're Oracle Consulting has certified us as a, as a certified services partner, which basically means that uh, they've recognized our skill set and that um, we're qualified to subcontract underneath them. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty rare certification to have. Uh, all of our consultants are also Hyperion certified. You know, for example, David Quinn, who will be presenting a uh, planning certified expert, and he's an SBA certified expert. Um, all of our consultants have those, those certifications. Uh, all of our consultants also have a blended background on finance and technology, which, you know, this gives them that real world understanding of what issues uh, that the real world organizations are dealing with. They didn't, uh, they didn't grow up in the consulting world as much as they grew up in the in the business world and, uh, and have switched over to consulting. Uh, and then, as you can see, um, as we go to the next slide, you can see on our client list that we can we handle organizations small all the way to, to very large, we handle projects from very small to, to very large, um, pretty much a full service shop. Uh, and one last point before I before I turn this over to David, uh, there's one big differentiator that I see for KPI. Um, and that's, that's our SMART program, which is a system maintenance and remote troubleshooting program. Uh, and I would assume most people on this, this conference call or on this uh, webinar have a have Hyperion environment already up and running in some capacity. And there's probably, from what we've seen, an administrator there uh, running that system. And usually it's one person. And uh, we have this SMART program set up because what if that person gets sick, leaves the company, goes on mater maternity leave, uh, you end up with a, with a Hyperion system that nobody knows how to administer. Uh, we offer that, that we have this smart program uh, to help companies there doing administrative functions, running data loads, maintenance, calc scripts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, similar to what you would see as a remote DBA model that you see in a lot of other organizations. So um, that was one thing that we offer as a, as a company that I don't see any other consulting firm offering. Uh, so, any, uh, so if anyone wants any more information on that, please, you can let me know. Um, all my contact information and David Quinn's contact information you'll see at the end of this presentation. Um, and if you have any questions during this webinar, you can submit them via the chat function. David will address all the questions at the end. They'll go to him, so he'll see them as you present them, um, and then we'll have a question and answer at the end. And, and now I'd like to turn it over to David, and, and we can get started with the LCM presentation. So thanks again, everybody, for joining. And David? Thanks, Brian, um, and welcome, everybody. As Brian mentioned, I'm a, a consultant with Key Performance Ideas. And just a little background on, on me and LCM. Um, I've been implementing lifecycle management um, at a few of my past clients over about two years now. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here today to, to talk to you about lifecycle management or LCM as it's commonly referred to, but specifically how you can utilize LCM with your current Hyperion investments. Um, to get us kicked off, I just would like to review the agenda for, for today's webinar. First, I want to highlight the goals and, and key takeaways that we're going to be getting from the webinar today. And then I'd like to go into cover more details about specifically LCM, what LCM is, when to use LCM, and then review some of the important benefits of LCM. And then lastly, I'd like to demonstrate a few practical business applications we can see for LCM and then follow up with any questions and answers um, that you have. So feel free to submit uh, questions in the chat window, as Brian mentioned. And with that, let's get started. So today's goal. Well, the goal for today's webinar is to review the many reasons, I think, why LCM is a quick, consistent, flexible tool you can use 
to migrate your Hyperion applications from one environment to another. During the webinar, I ask that each one of you consider how you can leverage the tips and tricks I'm about to demonstrate within your current Hyperion investment. By learning about LTM today, you'll be better prepared to migrate environments, change operating systems, or just simply back up some components of your application. So let's ask ourselves a pretty important question. What is LTM? What are we covering? Well, LTM is a, is a tool of within shared services, and LTM stands for lifecycle management. And it's built to address a few common problems in most IT systems space. As you may know, there are usually three or possibly even four environments where your applications reside. And typically, these are development, test, and production. And a very daunting task is making sure that all these applications and all their components between the environments are the same. Now, this is important because if you're trying to test something, you need to have a barometer to measure how well either a new calculation, a new form, a new report, or a new grid will run in your production system. So you want to test the same components in dev or test. Now, what LCM does is it solves this migration issue through a really intuitive and easy import and export system so that you always have consistent and similar uh, components between your environments. What is this solution? Well, the LCM solution is remarkably simple and very efficient. Users are provided with a, a graphical interface, and they can select an entire application or pieces of that application they'd like to export. And then they can define their migration by specifying a name and then even saving that file so they can use that in the future. Now, these exported files can be imported into another environment or they can be stored on the same environment and used as a backup. The products compatible with LCM uh, are SBase, planning, HFM, your security and your permissions and shared services, EPMA, and then the reports and um, finance reports as well. You can even save uh, deployment settings and re-import those into your new environment. Now, what I think is most convenient about LCM is it's a single tool that's already in your Hyperion tool set, and you can use that to back up or migrate applications. It's in one location, and it serves multiple functions. Very convenient. So now that we understand what LCM is, let's look at how to access it and then really reasons why we should implement LCM. Well, first, as I mentioned, it's located within shared services. So if you already have shared services today, you already have access to LCM. It can be accessed by going to the web console for shared services, and then when you expand a folder called application groups, and this is a list of all the separate components you can export. Uh, administrators automatically have access to LCM, but they can give additional users access to the tool if they so choose. Now, from this web console, users can then select specific artifacts that they'd like to export or specific artifacts they'd like to import that have already been exported. LCM uses the terminology artifacts for these components of the application. So an artifact is a web form, a report, a calc script, a substitution variable, access permissions, etc. So maybe a more important question is why should you use LCM? Well, if you ever had to ask an infrastructure team to back up your application or you wanted to restore a backup of a report, email first hand, this takes a lot of time. Now, LCM provides a way for administrators and users, implementers, to be self-sufficient, and then infrastructure can focus on more uh, secure tasks and make sure that the servers are properly maintained. So this really empowers the users and administrators of Hyperion Investment. Now, this diagram I want to show shows the, the common methods to import and export with LCM. First, as, as I mentioned, you want to make sure that a user is provisioned with LCM access. So that's administrators and then users that have LCM access. The export path is, is the same regardless of what you're trying to do. So a user logs into shared services, selects the artifacts they'd like to export, and then those artifacts are stored in the server where shared services resides. But now when it comes to importing, there are two different methods which depend on really what you want to do. If you want to import artifacts to a new environment, let's say you're migrating from your test environment back to development, well, you'll follow the path on the left, which means that you're going to copy the artifacts that have been exported, 
in the, on the source file system to the target file system. And then you log into the target file, to the target shared services server, and then you can import those artifacts through shared services. This would be migrating between environments. Now, the second method, which is on the right, um, is if you'd like to import an artifact from the same server. So let's just say, today, I want to export a report. I'd export it. It's stored on the file system on the same server. And then if a few days later, I'd like to import that. I can just say, I'm, and I don't have to move any files. I just log back into shared services and import that file. I don't have to copy anything. And then I have access to past reports. So here is a screenshot of LTM in action. This is in the Shared Services Console, and you can see with this menu, you have a, a wide range of things you can select. And you can see this list of artifacts. And on the left, you can see that there's Business Rules, S-Space, Foundation, which is um, EPMA, and Shared Services, and then Planning and Report. Also HFM, but that's not a screenshot. So as an example, if you wanted to do something with Hyperion Planning, you can select that, and then you can expand Hyperion Planning. You can see there's a number of artifacts you can choose. If you want to export an entire application and move between environments, then you can select each artifact, like the top uh, screenshot shows. But if you want to just back up or only move over a few components, you can select you know, forms, task lists, or the security, whatever you'd like to select, and then that will export to those specific artifacts. So now that we have a taste for what the console looks like and what we're trying to do, let's understand what's going on in the background during this export process. Well, these artifacts that you're exporting are stored as XML files on the server. Now, these files that are stored have a definition in each one for each separate object. Now, when you export the files, the file folder is created on the server, and it's under your username, for instance, my folder will be named dquin and native directory, and all my exports are stored in this folder. And then I can only access those. No other users can access my exports, and uh, I can't access any other users' exports. Now, these artifacts have some important functions. They can be copied to the target environment if we're going to be migrating, but they can also be edited and then re-imported. So if you, for instance, a, a great tool that you can use with LCM is um, adding users and shared services. You can export an XML file, manipulate it, possibly adding new users to groups. It's really simple. And then you can re-import it. You don't have to do all the signing security within shared services. So these XML files can be manipulated once they're exported, and that's a great, great functionality. Now, on this slide, I want to show a few of the, the options you have when you select um, the variety of different uh, options with LCM. You can see there's shared services, EPMA, S-Base, reports, planning. Now these are all the options you can select. You can select specific things, or you can select the entire application. I think what this shows is this really robust and flexible tool that enables users and administrators to import and export a variety of different things. So now that we've mastered the skill of exporting, we need to import, import those files somewhere. And I came up with, what I think, a convenient acronym to remember when trying to import artifacts, and I call it EASE, E-A-S-E, -E, importing with EASE. So first, there's really three reasons why we're importing these artifacts, as I mentioned earlier. We can either import to a new environment from the same environment, or we can manipulate and then uh, import in the same environment or a new environment. But regardless of what you're trying to do, the import process is the same. First, what you're going to do is expand the file systems node. That's the E. And then you're going to do your artifact selection. That's A. And then select which specific components you want to import, which is S. And then lastly, click on Execute to begin your migration. Now, this is a simple way to remember the steps necessary to conduct any LCM import. So we've covered how and where we can go to implement LTM. So now I'd like to summarize the key traits that I see of LTM. And I touched on this earlier, but the way I see it is there's really two major benefits when you use LTM. 
The first is empowering your users. LCM users and administrators can now easily back up their files from migration audits, and they can do this using the same product and the same methodology each time. It's a consistent way to look at your migrations. And two, users are now given more capabilities than they had before. Migrations can be easily scheduled, they can be saved and executed, and then um, it enables users to move between operating systems. If someone is using Windows Server and they want to upgrade to Unix, these export uh, XML files can be used on either operating system. And lastly, LCM enables users to create and manipulate these XML files and then re-import them, allowing them to create content, not just migrate content. Now, this is what I think is the best quality, and it's really fantastic, and it's very easy to use. So, to summarize, there's really three major uses. Migrating between environments, backing up on a single environment, or creating content by importing these XML files. These functions enable users a wide range of capabilities that they can then be used throughout the investment with Hyperion. And it exists in a tool set that you already have. This isn't just an implementation tool to be used throughout the life of the product. Now, I'd like to share a few of the tips and tricks that I've discovered while implementing LCM over the, the years. First that I, thing that I noticed is that order is very important. You want to make sure to start with EPMA, then import your shared services, financial reports, s based planning, and HFM. And if you don't have some of these products, then they can fall out of the order. But the most important piece is to start with EPMA if you're using it, and then go to shared services. If you're not using EPMA, make sure you import shared services first. Also, if you do use EPMA, it's, it's important to select an artifact called Dimension Shared. Um, now, what this is, is it, it's the shared dimensions, and, it, and then also when you select application properties, this maintains those exclusions that you may have in your, your hierarchies. So make sure to select those two artifacts when you're using EPMA import. And then lastly, it's important not to run import simultaneously. Um, I found that this can cause uh, an import to air out. So I, I just make sure to run them sequentially. And just make sure that when you're migrating to a new environment, you can create a folder for yourself. Um, again, you know, mine would be dquin. Uh, at Native Directory or, or MSAD if you're using an uh, Active Directory. And then this is where all of my files will be imported and exported to. So let's look at some examples of, of really the wide range of, of functions that LCM serves. That's three business cases. The first case is if we're implementing a system and, you know, during the implementation, there's, there's a lot of changes. It's very complex. It's a moving environment. And you're going to be creating reports. You're going to be creating web forms. You're going to be changing metadata. And this may be happening every day while you're, you're developing uh, your content. So what do you do when someone comes up to you and says, hey, we need to go back to the report from last week? You have to create, you know, a report and save it and have multiple reports out there. Um, do you have to recreate the report if you're not saving different versions? Um, or do you, what, you know, what are you going to do? But this is a great example of what LCM can do. You create your migration, uh, for the entire environment, and you can run this as a backup, and you can save this. You can even have a task, Windows task manager run it daily, so that whenever you're requested with, hey, we need a report from last week, you can go to the, the, the export file, find the date that's requested, and then re-import that without ever having to go to any backups, any CDs, um, any you know, server backups. You can do this all yourself as an individual user. The next case is, let's say, you're trying to move your environment. You just finished development. You're ready to move. The server's ready for test. Or you're ready for production. You have EPMA. You have planning and that space. It's a number of different products. There's a number of different ways you used to be able to, to um, migrate web forms, for instance, between between environments. And typically, you'll see that EPM products are, are managed by finance. You know, IT doesn't really support these migrations. 
and you need this to go, you know, this go live is coming up. You need to get this into production really soon. So what do you do? Do you have to have users access development? Or do you have to wait until IT can help you migrate the entire environment over? Or do you have to do it separately, like you, with the export utilities that exist today? Or rebuild the application. That can take a lot of time. But none of these solutions fit. But with LTM, you can export the entire environment, copy these small XML files from the development server to your production server, and then import the artifacts and deploy your application right away. It's very simple, very easy to use, and again, empowering users. Now lastly, final example is, let's say you had to add more users to your HSM and planning application. Um, maybe you bought a, a new business unit and you have you know, hundreds of users that need, need access. Well, what you can do with LTM is export your current uh, data when shared services, your current user groups, and then you can look at that XML file and add new groups, add new users to groups within that XML file in a single place, you can even do it in Excel and then copy it into this XML file, and then re-import that XML file, and it'll create all that new content for you. It'll create the permissions, it'll create the groups, create the users, um, and it's, it's really a simple one-stop shop, um, easier to use than doing all the provisioning and, and shared services. So this is, a, you know, enhanced functionality that you could not do before. It's really a great tool. I've, I've found LTM works well. You're serving all three functions, you're migrating between environments, you're backing up. Now, one note, it, 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 I wouldn't use LTM as the primary backup for, for your server, and there still should be uh, you know, a more robust way to back up an entire server, but it's a great way to empower users to, to have that functionality. So that is the end of the presentation. Um, I'd be glad to answer some questions. I see some in the chat window. But if you haven't had a chance to submit a question already, please make sure to do so in the chat window now in the WebEx. And I'll start to read through some of these. So here's a question. Can LCM migrate data between applications? Now, unfortunately, LCM does, does not. It only handles artifacts, um, objects, and, and metadata, and it does not handle data itself. All right, next question we have. What version of Hyperion does LCM work with? Um, it works with any version of 11. Um, I've done, I've used LCM with a 11.1.1.1 and then all the way up to 11.1.2. Um, and I've seen really dramatic improvements in the product. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of investment in LCM and I think the future is very bright, uh, for LCM. Um, how do you schedule migrations as a backup? That's a very good question. And so, the way that migrations are they're first defined, and then you can save those those migration definition files, and then that's a file on your file system. You can use Windows Task Scheduler on your server to execute that definition every night. Um, so it's a combination of using LTM and also using Windows uh, Task Scheduler as well. Um, here's another question. So no matter which artifact, HFM, space planning, LTM will stage artifacts on shared services. Server. So, yeah, what happens is that you, regardless of, of what application you're using, you run your, your migration, and then the files are stored on the shared services server. And then the folder is under, it's called the common folder, and then within that, there's a import-export. And then you'll see a list of the LTM users, and you can look at each one of their, their folders and see all the XML files. So all of this, regardless of application, is stored on the shared services server. And that is it for questions. Are there any more questions out there? Okay. I haven't seen anything. Again, thank you for joining. I hope you learned about LCM. I think it's, it really is a great tool. It serves a, a variety of purposes. And as Brian mentioned earlier, if you have any questions with sales or about this presentation, feel free to reach out. Brian's information is here. Um, Brian Decker, B. Decker at, at KeyPerformanceIdeas.com, and his office number is listed. And then, again, I'm David Quinn, D. Quinn at KeyPerformanceIdeas.com, and my phone number is listed. 
feel free to reach out. I'd love to help anybody out with LCM. Thanks for joining, and I hope that you can use LCM with your Hyperion investments.